Hello, everybody. Hi, Jeff Morrow here from sunny Chicago land. About to make you guys something that, uh, quite frankly, everybody needs to eat at least once a week because it, co it combines everything everybody needs for a fortified, complete life, and that is meat, cheese, and bread. In case you don't know out there, once again, my name is Jeff Morrow, and I am the Sandwich King, a title given to me by one Bobby Flay when I won season seven of Food Network Star almost nine and a half years ago, which was a reality show program that uh, made me live in a house with a bunch of yahoos where I competed to win my own Food Network show. This was nine years ago. Now, currently, I am the one of the co-hosts of The Kitchen on Food Network, which airs on Food Network Saturdays at 10 a.m., 11 uh, Eastern time, and it's now in its 25th season, so I'm happy to be here on behalf of Little Kids Rock Rocks, which is a, a fantastic organization I can get behind, A, because uh, we rock in this house daily. My son is a uh, tremendous musician. I'm a worse-than-him musician, and he's only 11 now, so I know how important music education is, so I'm happy to kind of call attention to it, especially nowadays when we are stuck in these times and kids might not be going back to school anytime soon. So we have to find a way to kind of educate them and show them the wonders and the educational benefits of music. So I'm so happy to be here. Thanks to Keith, thanks to everybody. Uh, let's get started, shall we? I heard some of you guys might be following along. So we'll try to keep it, uh, you know, uh, simple, but also uh, get to it because I've got a little surprise coming at the end of this demo. I have written a song uh, inspired by this recipe, which is my number one most received question in the world for the for, for my whole life, at least being on television. And that is, is a hot dog a sandwich. And we will answer that question in musical form with my son on the drums, me on guitar singing in a little bit let's start shall we i'm i'm outside i got my grill you can do this totally outside luckily for me i have a side burner right here in a little pot and we are making bacon cheesy dogs right these are crispy bacon hot dogs right in a beautiful brioche bun with now i'm going to tell you something the problem with a lot of bacon dogs if you've been to uh you know los angeles they do this a lot a lot of the street joints right they wrap the dog in bacon. What happens is half of the bacon is flaccid. We don't want that. Every bite is gonna be crispy bacon, beautiful, rich, salty hot dog, smothered in homemade cheese sauce and topped with crispy onions. You got double crunch, homemade cheese, soft bun, pop in your mouth hot dog. It's gonna be fantastic. So first thing we're gonna do is take our hot dogs. Now I'm using these guys, these are like usually consider about six to one hot dogs. What that means is about six hot dogs to one pound. I think this is the golden ratio of hot dog, right? Because these always cover the bun, right? Nothing worse than a hot dog laid up in a bun, and then you got an inch of meatless bun on the ends. It's a catastrophe. I get very upset. Don't do it to your family. Don't do it to your friends, and don't do it to yourself. So get the big guys, right? And that's that's just big enough. You size it up to your bun, and then you know. Okay, size it up to your bun when you're in the grocery store, though, right? Not when you get home, because then you get, you know, you get in hot water with the whole family. If they, if you serve them a hot dog in, in too much bun, it's not good. So I got my grill on high here. So we're gonna just put these hot dogs right on the grill. You could fry these hot dogs. You could steam these hot dogs. All right. Just don't put them in like a hot water bath. Don't boil your hot dogs. I think that just kind of leeches all the flavor out of it. You don't want that. So I'm going to get a nice little char on this because who doesn't like those charred lines on a hot dog as another element of texture. All right, we're putting those right on the grill. Now this is something that is perfect. Look at that. I just pulled that off the grill. You can do this in the oven. Now, do you know what this is? This is four strips of bacon on a quarter sheet pan with a parchment lined tray here on there. Okay. So what this does, right? I call this the Morrow method of bacon cookery. I do this several times a week when my son wants bacon, but I don't want to make a mess because nothing's messier than splattery bacon all over your kitchen backsplash, all right, all over the, the grates of your stovetop, all this stuff. So what I do is I take the sheet pan. You could do this in a larger sheet pan, a larger baking dish. Just get the roll of parchment, roll it, and line it up so you have this border about an inch 
around the perimeter of the pan. Now, what this does, you see all that lovely fat in there? I smell this bacon. It smells so good. You smell it? Do you? And what it does is it fries the bacon in the parchment, right? And once it's crispy, right, all you do is put it on a paper towel lined plate. You let that crispy bacon drain, and then you let this solidify, and you throw away the parchment. And guess what's underneath the parchment? Nothing. It's clean. You don't have to scrub pans. You don't have to put fat in a cup and find a place to put it. This is an unbelievable thing. I can't tell you how important it is to do the Morrow method of bacon cookery. I'm going to flip my dogs here. Let's make this cheese sauce. This is the easiest, most stable cheese sauce in the world, right? We all grew up going to ballparks, getting that plate of nachos and that bright orange, vibrant, weirdly colored cheese, right, that we love to dunk things into. We're going to kind of mimic that, but make it a little more fresh, a little more nuanced, right? Have a little bit of homemade quality to it. And that's starting with, believe it or not, the secret ingredient to a stable, creamy cheese sauce, evaporated milk. We're going to put this right in a pan, just one can of that, right? Shake it up good. And what this does, right, this is like evaporated milk. It's just literally like canned milk, essentially, that's a little more concentrated. So it's going to give us a really silky uh, uh, texture to it. And when we add our cheese in it, it's not going to break apart, so you don't have to make a roux. You don't have to uh, sit there with the butter and the flour and stir it and everything. Because even as good as that is for like mac and cheese and stuff, when we're doing it like this, we want it like sitting on the stovetop, super stable, ready to ladle on anything. If you're making stovetop mac and cheese at home, you make this cheese. If you're making nachos, you're going to make this cheese. If you're making like a, a creamy pasta, you're going to make this cheese. So we're going to get this kind of almost simmering and then we'll add a blend of cheeses. Now there's a, a, a secret blend I use for this sauce because you need steak. You gotta need one creamy cheese, which, what is that? Usually American, uh, Pepper Jack, Monterey Jack, Velveeta. And I know we all love the logs, right? Those, those weird blocks of Velveeta cheese that I love. Uh, by the way, we are taking questions here. So if you're game, I got my first question. Where did I get my t-shirt? This is an original 1994 Grateful Dead Fall Tour shirt. I got it online, and it fit me, so I kept it. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. It's not cheap, all right, buying vintage uh, concert shirts, but I'm a huge uh, Dead fan, and when I saw this, it's a must. And I rarely ever wear shirts that aren't black, so this was a perfect, I got, you know, per per perfect look for me. Thank you. What artist am I looking forward to seeing uh, today? the little kids rock event uh i gotta be it's gotta be phil lesh man you know i was signed up way early on because i love doing this stuff for the kids but when i heard phil was involved i mean that's a legend to me it's amazing right aren't we so blessed to be here beautiful watching things via the internet right making things work during these times like we're making the hot dogs and the bacon work outside here so i got my right i could see it start to steam a little bit right we just want it warm. We don't want it simmering too much. Now we can add our cheese. So my creamy cheese is Monterey Jack. And then I have some fresh ground sharp cheddar. You can use the stuff in the package that comes pre-grated, but in a lot of times it has anti-caking agents and you don't know how much is in there. And it doesn't have that great meltitude that hand grated cheese has. So I urge you, please use the stuff, get the block, grate it. Hi, my wife's looking at me from the, uh, yeah, she's like, thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, thumbs up. I made it. I did. I'm on time. But she's always, uh, you know, she's always on it. She's always, so we're going to dump that right in there. Okay. Give it a little stir. And now that cheese is going to melt along with that uh, evaporated milk and kind of just get become homogenous, right? Which is something you can't get with just milk in there. Okay, that's why we use the evaporated milk. All right, another little special cheese I like to put in there. You know what that is? That's funky blue. Now, I don't want this smelling like a gym locker or tasting like a gym locker, but I want a little level of something that when you take a bite, you know it's homemade, you know it's different, and it just carries that flavor of cheese all the way through. So literally like a, ta a tablespoon, and if you can handle it, two tablespoons. I can handle it. Two are going in there. And it's just going to bring the funk, right? That's the base. You need the base. Right now, this is just all this is all hi-hat. Maybe a little, like, a little bit of, you know, 
a little bit of lead guitar, a little rhythm guitar, maybe a little, you know, uh, alto sax, but we need to bring the funk. And how are we doing that? We're bringing the blue cheese, right? It adds that high note. This is fantastic. Where are you from? Can't figure out your accent. That is a good question. I don't know where I'm from. I am from Chicago. Thank you for asking. Born, raised, still here. I can't leave. Uh, so that's that tasty accent you're hearing. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes, isn't it? But, you know, if you're a, uh, you know, fan of SNL from the 90s, you probably know <laughs> from the Bears, right? But here we go. We're going to mix this. Now we're going to flavor this up. So I got my bacon. Good to go, right? It's getting crispy. It's sitting in there on the warm heat. And we're just kind of mixing this lovely cheese sauce look at that and it's it's just gonna get thick and rich and how do we know the cheese sauce is ready when it coats the back of the spoon and you drag it i'll show you in a minute drag it through the back of the spoon and it kind of leaves a leaves a canal right that's when we know it's ready now i have some cornstarch here which will help thicken it up so we're gonna make a little slurry so this is just regular cornstarch i put in a little bowl and i got some water and we're going to make this slurry. Now, this is a great way to kind of thicken things up without imparting any additional flavor or work. All right. We don't want it too gloopy. So just a little bit at a time. So a little, a little water, you mix it with your spoon. And then you have this kind of just liquid that you can't tell it's super thick, but once it hits the heat, it'll thicken up. That's why you never want to put your cornstarch directly in any bubbling hot liquid it'll just clump up and seize up the minute it goes in there and then you have all these little clumpy bits in there so that's why we dilute it in the water and just a couple little spoonfuls in there and then we'll see if it doesn't thicken up as it simmers we add a little more cornstarch that's the beauty of cornstarch okay now we're going to flavor it up a little tabasco i'm smelling that dog it smells so good i need to know is that charred enough is that charred enough? I think so. When it starts getting blisters on it, look at that. That is the best. Thank you all for being here, for your time and your donations. It's a very important cause, like I said. A couple dashes in there. Again, a little more high note. I don't want it spicy. I just want that vinegar and that acid in there. Give it a little edge, right? And a little more edge, Dijon mustard. I love it. We got nine kinds. This is in the squeeze bottle. Can't go wrong. And then of course, we're gonna season it with a little salt and pepper, which I love to keep right here under my grill for times like these. Just give it a little pinch and we'll taste it and reseason if necessary. Let me see if there's any more questions here. Who's my favorite kind of cheese? Is it wrong if I say American cheese? Is it wrong? Is it the most underrated cheese on the planet? Yes. Is it not the chefiest cheese? Yes. But if you eat a grilled cheese without American cheese, are you disappointed? Yes, you are, aren't you? You are very disappointed. This cheese sauce is coming together beautifully. I am so excited. Our bacon's going. Our dogs are charring here. This is fantastic. Corned beef or pastrami? That's a question. Now, it says this on my bio, if anybody Googled me before they uh, logged into this event and we're like, who the hell is this Jeff Morrow character? Why should I watch him? Why should I wake up at the crack of six and watch this guy make a hot dog? Well, it's because I'm the Sandwich King AP. I love pastrami more than anything so much. On my bio, it does say my favorite color is pastrami. To me, it is like the greatest combination of smoked meat and deli meat, right? Because I love corned beef, right? But man, when you impart the smoke and the bark with the peppercorns and the coriander and the brown sugar, and you go to a real joint like in LA, like Langer's in Los Angeles, Cats in Chicago, or sorry, Cats in uh, New York, uh, Manny's in Chicago, and it's hand cut and it's fatty and it just melts in your mouth. There's nothing better on a piece of rye bread with a little schmear of mustard. That's my favorite sandwich, if anybody's asking. This cheese sauce is bananas. Now, how do we know the cheese sauce is done? Like I said, look at this. All right. I want to visualize it being ladled on top of the hot dog. And will it stay? Will it run off 
or will it clump up? We want to find that happy Goldilocks zone. Okay. I'm going to take, I got to take a union break here and have a sip of beer because I'm a grown American man and I deserve it. Beatles or stones. That's another question. Uh, I love, listen, I love the stones. One of my favorite al- albums of all time is exile on main street from top to bottom. One of the greatest. I love the stones. I love the raucous nature. I love the rock and roll root vibe. I love their messiness. I love that they still tour, even though they're 112 years old. I appreciate all that. But deep down, I'm a born and raised Beatles fan. The whole catalog, everything from hold the hand to the end. All right. So when they started falling apart, let it be. I'm a giant Beatles fan. We listen to the Beatles more than any other band in this house. And I appreciate them more. And I'm a George guy for the follow up question. I love George and I love Joel's George's solo work. And I think All Things Must Pass is the greatest Beatles solo album out of any of the Beatles. See, now you got me heated. Danielle, I'm sorry. Danielle's moderating this. And, and she's like, don't get heated, Jeff. So I love to listen to other music. I'm a big Dead fan, obviously, by the shirt. Wilco fan. I love hip hop. Um, I love everything. Indie music. Every fan. Big Strokes fan. I'm a big, uh, I like jazz. I love blues. Okay. I love it all. Let's get our miso plus ready here. A couple things we're going to add to this. All right. We got the cheese sauce. We got the bacon. We got the hot dogs. Now we need a little more direct onion crunch. I love onion on a hot dog. I love raw onion on a hot dog. We're big Chicago hot dog traditionalists here in the Morrow house. Uh, In a traditional Chicago hot dog has a couple things on there. Diced onion, just relish, sport peppers, and yellow mustard. There's there's something that a lot of people probably out there listening put on their hot dogs. And I don't want to I don't want to split any hairs. I don't want to create a divide. But you shouldn't put it on your hot dog. And you know what that is, kids. That's ketchup. Stop it. Ketchup are for the fries on the side of the hot dog. Not on top of the hot dog. It just ruins the party, man. It's like that one guest you bring to the party. Right. The party's hopping. Everybody's there. And then in walks your sister with her friend, you know, you know, Ronnie. Right. Who ends up, you know, taking a real nasty crap in the first floor bathroom. Right. And then clogs it and then drinks the good booze from the top shelf that you really didn't offer anybody. I'm talking about like the pappy. Right. That's kind of hidden. And he finds it. He drinks that with like Sprite. All right. And then he talks a bunch of nonsense and overtakes the conversation. That's what ketchup is like on a hot dog. You don't want that guy at the party. But then it's kind of fun to talk about it when they leave. Right. That's the thing. That's fun. That's a good one. I'm going to put that in the bank. It's a funny little bit, isn't it, Danielle? What is my favorite meal? Besides sandwiches, which we've already gone through the pastrami pizza, pepperoni pizza. Or if I'm in a crazy mood, pepperoni and sausage pizza. I'm digging Detroit pizza these days. I make a lot of it. I made a pan pizza in that pizza oven right there for the kitchen. Who's watching the kitchen out there? Any of you guys? I hope so. Every Saturday, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Also, listen to my podcast. It's called Come On Over. I do it with my sister, my little sister. We release it every week. A new one was released today. It's called Come On Over. You can get it at comeonover.com or on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts. And I think it's really fun and funny. And it's a little glimpse into our ridiculous life. All right. It's my least favorite food to eat and cook. This is my least favorite food and I've never had it. So I can't say it's my least favorite, but I will never have it because it skeeves me out. And that would be cottage cheese. I don't know. Something about those little curds that stick to the bowl and they're like, it's got that sour smell. I love cheese in all forms. I love it. Regatta. Love it. Blue cheese, the funkier. I love eating cheese that makes me sweat. And then two hours later, makes me sweat in the shower after I'm trying to cool down. I love it all. Cottage cheese, I don't know. Something about it. And then people put fruit in there. I shave. That's it. That's, I'm sorry. We're really getting to the bottom of who I am here today, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. All right, let's check that bacon too, huh? My dogs are perfectly charred. Look at that. Now that, my friend, that's the Morrow method, right? Remember, we did the parchment in there. 
Now you can do this in a big sheet pan. You can do you, the beauty of like a half sheet pan. Those are the normal ones you bake cookies on, you, you do roasted chicken on all that stuff, which is about double the size of this quarter sheet pan will fit usually, uh, you know, uh, a pound of bacon, which is usually 12 slices. So you do it, you clean it, you throw away the paper or better yet, you reserve that beautiful, not burned bacon fat. And then you use that for cooking little green beans, make a little salad dressing on it. Put a little on your on your on your eyelids, right? Make give a little. It's like a pore closer. And put a little in the uh, nostrils, right? Before you go to bed, so that the bacteria doesn't hit. Something like that. Listen, I'm not a doctor. Don't listen to what I'm doing. I'm not a dermatologist, nor a licensed. Uh, what's the what, what are the kids called? The uh, anesthetician. I don't do nothing that. I just make bacon and, and meat and cheese and bread. Okay, and that's what we're doing today. So the piece de resistance for this. Now, I know I'm a big time chef. I've studied, French trained, cooking a lot of times. The greatest ingredient you can put in your cupboard, cupboard, I said it, I'm old timey, your, your pantry, your old cupboard, yes, the cupboard, are French fried onions. And these babies are house brand. I don't care. I live life on the edge. Okay, I'm the James Dean of food. I buy French fried onions in the can. You pop it open. You put these guys on any sandwich, guaranteed knockout. All right, we're putting them on our hot dog. We've already alluded to that. You put them on salads, delicious. You put it on a beautiful braised short rib, a braised succulent beef, right? Swimming in a, a red wine reduction sauce, right? With a little something. And you put this on top and it gives you a little onion crunch in every bite. It's so easy. No need to go fry your onions, stink up your house. Just buy this. It lasts forever. I mean, this will last you to the next pandemic. Guaranteed. Now, that's a Jeff Morrow guarantee. These things, like, don't go bad. What is the date on this thing? I don't know, 2092. Who would have thought? So you got to keep some of those. Now, it's all about bun choice, right? You can go cheapo. I got my cheapo with the onions because they're good. Cheaper the better, I think. I like a good bakery bun or a brioche hot dog bun. Now, what's, 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 what's brioche, right? Brioche is a beautiful bun, but it's golden because there's butter in it, which gives it another edge, right? We're just layering flavors here. We're just paying attention to everything we're doing. Pay attention to the bun. What I love about these ones, these ones are available at Whole Foods, is they got the split top on there, almost like a New England lobster roll. So it nestles in there nice, especially when you're loading up with fun stuff. Beautiful, right? It's already there. Instead of having like the side bun and it's, it's rolling around, nobody likes a hot dog rolling Let's see if there's any more questions before we get to build. Okay, I, how do I, do you prefer cooking inside or outside? I asked my wife. I'm a very messy cook, so she likes me outside. What's beautiful about cooking outside is, A, we, we, we get like in Chicago about nine weeks to do it uh, because the other ones, you know, the other weeks are just uh, in, in, inhabitable. Uh, number two, you just hose it off. My wife will come out here when I'm done with it, and she'll hose me off. Yeah, like I just got locked up. Like, like I'm in the joint and they're hosing me off before I, you know, get cell block C, right? It's hosing me off. And that's an easier way to clean up. Inside, it just, it lingers. The smell lingers. I love cooking, but I don't want to smell onions when I go to bed. I'll tell you that much. What else do you make in the awesome pizza oven besides pizza? Great question. I love roasted whole chicken in the pizza oven. You get it like clipping it like 400 degrees. You got the wood smoke billowing. It just perfumes every bite of that chicken. You get a beautiful crust. You get the top flame kind of, you know, kissing the, the top of that. And, and you get a beautiful even, and they, I love vegetables. And carrots, rainbow carrots in there, zucchini, anything. If I'm making pizzas in there, it's never the only thing I'm making in there. So that's what you got to, if you're ever thinking about a pizza oven, you got to get in that mindset. If pizzas cook up in two minutes in that oven, you get it so hot. It's not about that. It's about like what you make before you do the pizzas. You don't want to waste all that beautiful smoke, all that beautiful natural wood flavor. I love it. What dish that you made was a complete disaster. Not this one. This is going to be good. Uh, you know what? I screw up. You know what I screw up a lot that people I'm kind of afraid to admit is um, rice. Just regular old rice. I can't get it down. I don't know why. The rice gene missed me. I can't make rice. I can make risotto. 
I can microwave frozen rice, and that's what we have in the house from TJ's. That's shorthand for Trader Joe's. We keep it in the freezer. I pop it in two minutes. Boom. It's nice rice. Otherwise, I forget about it. It becomes too uh, mushy or it's undercooked. I can't do it. And my wife makes fun of me. Why is music so important to me? Because it's something to do other than staring at your damn phones. And this is what I tell my son, right? So I got my son in a, a point where that's his outlet downstairs. You'll see the room in a minute, about a couple minutes. Yeah, we got to build this. But it's, uh, I think it's, it's using a part of your brain that uh, you don't encounter otherwise. Maybe with math or some other of the arts, but music is like everything in one. And it's like, just flexes that muscle in your brain that you can't really flex otherwise that I appreciate so much being an adult playing since I was eight years old, some instrument that it's something I could do on my own without anybody else, right? It's an escape, right? I go down there and I always feel better after I play. So I, I love to impart, I think that kids, if they discover music uh, in, in any form at a young age, it locks in and it gives them a hobby. And I hate using the word hobby because to me it's a lifestyle, but it's, it's so damn important to have something like that besides TV, besides the internet, besides Instagram, all that stuff. All right, I'll get off my soapbox and get on my hot dog box and make one of these some of the beaches. And I'm gonna take this piece of bacon Instead of wrapping, you see it? Look, it's dripping all over my iPad with the questions. I'm going to put that, look at this. Look what I'm doing. We're not wrapping the dog. We're laying the dog on the bottom, crunchy, retaining texture. Next, we are going to take the most charred of those beautiful hot dogs. You can't. Right on. What am I doing? Breaking the rules. Hot dog on top of the bacon. Now, look at that ratio already. You can tell. Look at that. Boom. Look at that. Get your get, get get a leveler and put it up against that. It's totally even, Steven. All right. Next, we are going to take that awesome cheese sauce, Monterey Jack, sharp cheddar, a little blue cheese, mustard. All of that's going in there, and we are going to ladle it. Look at that. Do you see what I'm doing? Do you see? Right. Remember those like franchises your mom used to make wrapped in bacon with hard ass cheddar on it? No more kids. We're doing the cheese sauce from scratch using pretty much pantry pulls and fridge pulls. And next, that crunchy French fried onion topper right there. Look at that, make it pretty. This is a great one to do for parties, right? Lay them out just like this or put let people ladle their own cheese sauce on there. But I'm gonna warn you what happens I call it uh, cheese fondue syndrome, right? Like a cheese fountain syndrome where you like go to one of these, you know, fancy weddings where they have a fountain that is just spewing cheese and then people are just dragging their knuckles while they dip a pretzel into it. Don't do that because that encourages, not, it's like quadruple dipping and it's dangerous. All right, let's take a, a bite. Hey, babe, gra grab low. We're going to do the show. I mean, we're going to do the drumming. Have them get set up in the uh, music room. All right, there it is. Let's take a bite and tell you what it tastes like. Hot. Cubs or White Sox? White Sox. Born and raised. Deal with it. I know Cubs are America's team. But I'm a born and raised Sox fan. You can't get it out of you. But I'll tell you what's America's hot dog is this beauty bite a crispy slightly sweet smoky bacon charred dog crispy onions funky cheese sauce totally beautiful silky cheese sauce laying all over everything this has been so much fun i am gonna go downstairs all right we're gonna follow me right now and we're gonna play a song that i've entitled is a hot dog a sandwich hello say hello to my beautiful wife look at her hi guys i don't even know what you guys are doing i don't you're, either I'm gonna make you're gonna make a hot dog for yourself and that's Pino G. There he goes. And that's Jojo. All right, let's go downstairs. Hopefully I'm not losing uh, losing all you guys here. We got a whole nother set up downstairs. I got my cold one. Low, low. Yes. You set up? Come on. Okay. Everybody's watching. I don't know how many people, but I'm, I'm going to say it's about probably 20,000. 
<laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. Come on in and find out. Oh. All right. Welcome to the layer. So we call this our gymnasium. There's this kid right there. Lorenzo, say hello. Hello. That's Lorenzo, my son. And he's in the School of Rock program for about six, seven years. How long? Five years. Five years. I was close. And he has become quite a wonderful, talented musician. And hopefully, he can log on here and see it. Everybody enjoying themselves so far. Good to hear. Let's make sure this Zoom is all set up. Here we go. Danielle, if you're there, come on, buddy. If you're there, can you please let me in the Zoom here? Check, check, check. Thank you guys for your patience. This song. Hello, hello. All right, who's ready to rock? This is what happens when a chef has a music set up, but I'm pretty confident you guys are gonna like this little tune. It's a little original song Lorenzo and I have been working on. And what's it called, Lorenzo? It's a hot dog sandwich. Is it? I guess we'll find out. One, two, three. Here's a hot dog sandwich.
smokes. We're sweating here. Thank you guys so much. That was a joy. Did you have fun, Lo? Yes. Woo! That was a banger. That was a banger. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you to Keith, Danielle, everybody. Little Kids Rocks, thanks to all you guys for, uh, you know, keeping musical education for kids, especially in underserved, you know, underserved communities going. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Stay safe out there. Stay smart.